this will be our eighth year in uh, Black Dog Racing, racing the Corvettes. Uh, about two years ago, we decided it made sense to start taking some of the, the stuff we learned on the racetrack and the parts we built for the race car and, and selling them to the, the general public that use them on the street cars. It's not racing tight parts, it's actual race parts. Corvettes are a great car. Uh, they're track ready right off the showroom floor, but a lot of people find that fairly quickly, especially if they do some driving training, they learn to outdrive the car. So they come to us and we upgrade the parts, uh, either for longevity. Um, our racing series is all about longevity. If you don't finish the race, you're just not gonna do well in the series. There's no pit stops, if something breaks, you're done. Uh, so we, when we design a cam, uh, we design a motor package, we know it's gonna work on the street for thousands and thousands of miles uh, if it'll hold up in the race car. We got about 14 days, 14 working days before we got to be in the trailer for St. Petersburg, so uh, we got a little bit of race car work to do this morning. This is our trophy case. We obviously like it to be a lot bigger, but uh, this this was a gingerman trophy here. They give you a drinking mug. I don't quite understand what they're trying to hint at, but this one's from the Ferrari Challenge. This was second place at VIR. This is actually quite a prize trophy here, even though it's about the size of a shot glass. This is third place at Indy in 2001, and I got to stand up on the Indy podium, kiss the bricks, and all that stuff. It was it was quite a bit of fun, even though it's so tiny. And this is our best trophy to date. We got second place at uh, Infineon Raceway uh, in the Speed World Challenge in 2005. And that's what the picture behind is uh, of us on the podium. I'm apparently wearing some champagne there. This is our new, uh, one of our new Black Dog small block motors. This is uh, based on the LS2, so it will bolt in place of an LS type motor. Uh, all the LS accessories fit on it, but it is a complete custom motor. We actually had our own aluminum block cast, made up our own rotating assembly, our own cams, our own heads, all custom. And this motor starts at 510 cubic inches. It's the largest all aluminum LS small block available. This motor here on 93 octane with a very streetable cam uh, is 802 horsepower, 692 foot pounds of torque. It's going to idle like an LS, LS1 or LS3, uh, but it's going to have you know the horsepower of a, a twin turbo small block, the torque of a big block, but with none of that, with all the wiring and plumbing hassles to come with those big motors. A couple years ago, went down to Bloomington Gold to try and get a, a historic Corvette. First day I walked around, I saw this beautiful 57 here. I just fell in love with it. It was a, it's a power top car, which is extremely rare. There's probably like 18 of them. And uh, it was fully restored, gorgeous looking car. And I fell in love with it. The following day, I brought a buddy down who knows all about the old Corvettes and uh, knows what to look for and everything. And he's saying, nah, you, you don't want that 57 because that's just that, uh, it's a piece of jewelry. That's it. It's just a piece of jewelry. Yeah, you don't want it. So we walked around looking at the show, and he pointed out several cars which, you know, he thought were more traditional, less restored, more original. And one of them was this '59 here. I've been on several cars that that weekend. Uh, I won. Uh, I won the auction, so to speak, and noticed that it's an automatic. I didn't even know. When we looked at the car so thoroughly, we never looked at the transmission. <laughs> The 57 went up for auction, and uh, I know I kind of got in a bidding war with a guy, and uh, I went too far. <laughs> Wings are kind of misunderstood in the racing world. You know, lots of guys think you just bolt the wing onto the back of the car and you go down the track, but there's a lot more to it than that. First off, it has to be very solidly mounted. Uh, this wing is actually tied to four places on the frame below this decorative bumper, so it's actually firmly mounted to the car. 
because uh, the downforce you get from a real wing will push down on the back of the car. You can't have that deflecting through a soft piece of plastic or something like that. Another thing people forget to think about is when you put the downforce on the back of the car, you've got to do something with the front of the car to balance it out. Otherwise, you've got a car that's squashed down in the back and lifting in the front, which is a terrible combination. So not only when you put a wing on, not only do you sometimes have to go to a stiffer rear spring in the back, you usually go to some kind of air control in the front. So this is actually out of our Street Series line. It's a carbon fiber outer layer with some fiberglass backing. It looks very stock uh, until you get to the bottom edge of it. You can see we flattened out the bottom here and we've added a splitter underneath. The splitter actually extends a couple feet under the car. This is all based off of our old C5 race car technology, whereas we're getting the air that comes underneath and instead of letting it just go wherever it wants to go, we're directing it in a certain direction. Uh, this may be to help uh, brake cooling. It's also just to help to get the air out from under the car. This also pairs up well with our ventilated hood, uh, which this car doesn't have yet, whereas the air comes up underneath and then the ventilated hood allows it to escape out the top, which essentially keeps the car from floating as much. With the World Challenge race cars, uh, we've gone to producing all that body work ourselves. Now we've started to do other things uh, carbon fiber wise. Um, so we're starting to do these in carbon instead of the plastic that the Zero One comes with. We came up with a, with a roof panel and a B pillar, and then we followed that up with an A pillar uh, in carbon, which kind of ties the whole thing in nicely. Uh, we have a couple pieces coming for this. We can actually make these longer for track car guys, um, and we're going to have a splitter that's uh, encased in the bottom of this as well. This, this is a good example of some of the fabrication we do here at Black Dog. This is uh, uh, one of next year's race cars. It starts with a stock C6 chassis. Uh, we've done all the roll cage work here, all the welding in stock. Uh, we could match this up to any class you're running. If you wanted to run you know, SCCA, if you wanted to run T1, if you wanted to run uh, World Challenge, if you wanted to run Grand Am, whatever, you know, we get the specs for that racing series, the rule book for that racing series. You make the cage to match. Um, meets all the safety specs required. We also do all the uh, floorboard work. Uh, we put in the pedals, we'll put the drivetrain into this car, uh, and then fit it up with our carbon fiber body panels at the end. called Black Dog Customs, but Ray called it Speed Shop, and then made up stickers and put them on stuff. <laughs> so I lost out on the name. <laughs> I only want to do good work. That's the only work worth doing. We plan on being around for a long time. We plan on establishing you know, a, a top shelf name in this game of uh, tuning and modifying cars and, and Corvettes in particular. I was born in, you know, this great country of ours. Why would I not want to support it? <laughs> so, we could be a Ferrari shop, modifying Ferraris, but uh, we're an American-made shop, just like me.